You could have the camshaft, the crankshaft, everything lined up perfectly. But if there's an issue with the variable valve timing, you could have codes and a comeback. We're gonna find out how next. This video is sponsored by Ina, a Scheffler brand. Visit repexpert.us for more information. On a lot of import vehicles, you can have a variable valve time actuator, either on the intake or exhaust camshaft, or even both. If you're replacing the timing belt, it is critical for that actuator to be properly working. If there is an issue with the actuator, let's say one of the locking pins that holds the camshaft in position when oil pressure is not there is sheared away due to poor maintenance or other issues inside of the actuator, well, that camshaft can actually be off when the engine is turned over and it could cause codes like a crank and camshaft position correlation code. So how do you avoid making this mistake in the first place? Well, if a car is brought to you with a timing belt replacement and the customer is asking for it, or there's other issues with the vehicle, make sure you take a listen. Typically, if a actuator is damaged, it will make noise on startup and also shutdown because the locking pin is not there and the camshaft can move back and forth. The other key thing to do before you do any timing belt job is to scan the vehicle for codes and make sure there's no P codes in the ECU because this can indicate other engine damage that may cause other issues when you replace the timing belt. So even before you pull off that belt, make sure you're inspecting the engine, the condition of the original timing belt, and looking for codes. Resolve these before you replace the timing belt, and this way you're not gonna have a comeback. I'm Andrew Markell, thank you very much.